Thank you. And welcome everyone to this webinar. My name is Brian Candeloro. I am the Director of Engineering at Thor Labs Measurement Systems. In this presentation, we will touch briefly on some system design considerations and capabilities of laser scanning solutions and their application. As we will show, these systems can be relatively simple using a single axis to steer a beam, perhaps driven by a very low cost embedded device with a single analog output or combined into much more elaborate systems capable of focusing a laser spot on a three-dimensional object within a true 3D working environment. We will provide a brief glimpse into some of the characteristics and capabilities of Galvo beam steering that may make this technology a preferred solution for your particular application. This will by no means be an inclusive list of all the diverse uses or applications of these unique optomechanical devices. Some of the key attributes that make galvanometer based beam steering an attractive solution are high speed and high accuracy. Position angle sensing is highly integrated into the motor design allowing closed loop servo control, providing a predictable and linear time invariant or LTI system. Galvanometers provide a wide mechanical rotation for a large field of view. They share a common motor construction and controllers for beam diameters from as small as three millimeters to 50 millimeters. Application scan rates can vary from a few hertz up to a few kilohertz. The maximum possible for a particular system will depend primarily on mirror size and inertia. For instance, lower inertia systems, generally those with smaller mirrors, will be capable of higher scan rates over systems that are larger and heavier. Galvanometer scanners can be used as single axis or combined in multiple axis configurations, or paired with complementary steering technologies such as resonance scanners or polygon scanners for more complex optical geometries. Let us introduce a little bit about the theory of operation of a galvanometer closed loop system. The galva control architecture may be primarily analog or digital or a hybrid of the two. Analog drivers use a variation of PID, or proportional integral derivative control, often with some additional terms to achieve the fastest settling times. In short, the controller is monitoring the error, the difference between the position, requested position, and the measured position, and using this value to calculate an appropriate control output to drive the error towards zero. Digital controllers most often use either PID or state space implementations. The shaft angle sensor is built into the galvanometer construction to reduce moving mass and increase performance of the system. A high performance position detector is essential to achieve the speeds and accuracy required by these systems. Modern galvos employ moving magnet design for high torque ratios. System, system design requirements for small packaging often push driving a relatively large load with a small motor. As the load approaches or exceeds the inertia of the rotor itself, an undesired mechanical resonance will emerge, which is suppressed by the notch filter in order to help extend the control bandwidth. Typically, the notch, PID, and other configuration of the amplifiers is done at the factory per the order specification to deliver reliable and consistent performance expected by customers. Galvanometer beam steering has found wide usage across an incredibly broad range of industries, including industrial laser processing, life sciences, medical diagnostic, and some treatments. Laser marking applications make up a huge percentage of the Galvo system market. 
This includes making of permanent and indelible marks both on organic and inorganic materials. Target materials could be steel, aluminum, ceramic, cardboard, paper, uh, and plastics even to name a few. Life sciences and other imaging applications are also using galvanometers in profound ways. From drug discovery to medical imaging and microscopy. Optical coherence tomography or OCT techniques are enabling diagnostics and remarkable discoveries, particularly in biological tissue studies. All of these applications employ one or more galvanometers as key elements in the excitation or collection of data from the targets. So let's take a look at what you'll find when designing a galvanometer into your application. We'll start with a single axis. A typical single axis kit will include a galvanometer with a mirror, the mirror coating of your choice, depends on your application. Commonly available are coatings for broadband, infrared, and visible light, as well as dielectric coatings for specific single and multi-wavelength applications. You'll also find a servo amplifier, which is the electronics shown here. These are quite compact at just a little over two inches square. This does all the heavy lifting of ensuring that the galvanometer is moved to the position that you request. And of course, the requisite cabling between the two devices. As you move into integration of this technology into your particular application, there's some accessories that you may provide on your own or purchase from the catalog, such as power supplies and other power and command cables. To complete the integration, you'll need a method for mounting the amplifier to a heatsink, a clamp for the galvo itself that aligns with your particular optical geometry, a signal source, in this case a bipolar analog command, a light source and or your detection optics, depending on whether this is an outgoing beam system or an imaging system. In the case of industrial laser processing, uh, fiber lasers have become very common and are easy to integrate with our two axis scan systems. Stepping up in complexity, we have dual axis scanning systems. A two axis configuration is the core building block for our OEM processing packaged scan heads and three axis systems. XY systems are match tuned at the factory. And this is a key point for a high performing system. You may notice if you zoom in on the X and Y mirror combination, to, to enable the smallest possible packaging, the optimization of the X and the Y mirror are different. This results in inertias that are not the same between the X and the Y axis. However, it's important to know that given the same command, the X and Y will follow the same trajectory. Specifically, they will accelerate travel at the same velocity and decelerate to arrive at the destination at the same time. For example, if the system is commanded to draw a line, the X and the Y will match each other and ensure that the path traced on the workpiece or your projection is also following a straight diagonal line. Alternatively, getting up and running more quickly with laser processing would be to use a two axis Galvo system scan head. Shown here are examples of the XG series and the DCB series heads. Both feature industry standard XY2100 digital serial inputs. XY2100 provides 16-bit control resolution for X, Y, and optional Z channels at 100 kilohertz update rate. The signals are differential and can be easily transmitted a few meters within an electrically noisy factory environment. These heads, when coupled to the appropriate laser source and lens, are great for marking, scribing thin films, for automotive and solar, ablation of surface coatings, or even deep engraving. Cutting, scribing, and trimming materials from cardboard to semiconductors. Low power welding, 
sintering, or really any application requiring a few hundred watts. How do you choose the correct scan head? I'd suggest working back from the laser process requirements. The efficiency of a laser process will be determined by how effectively and quickly the beam energy can be delivered to the work surface. Two axis heads are configured as pre-objective scanners, meaning the moving mirrors are placed before the objective lens. The lens must then flatten the field and focus the spot uniformly across the work surface. The process will dictate the field size, spot size, and wavelength of the laser required. The most common lens is the F theta lens. For this lens, the scan field is larger than the lens itself. The spot is somewhat non-uniform. It will be round at the center of the field and a bit elliptical at the corners. Longer wavelength applications like CO2 at 10.6 micron can often be done well with a single lens or a singlet. Shorter wavelengths such as UV at 255 or 366 nanometer through YAG at 1064 nanometer require multi-element lenses like the one pictured here to achieve good spot quality. Not often needed, but for completeness, we can also talk about telecentric lenses. For these lenses, the scan field is equal or smaller than the lens diameter. The spot size and energy density is consistent throughout the field. And as shown, the laser is incident to the work surface at all times. So now you've assembled a scan head, a lens, and a laser appropriate for your material. What does laser processing look like in reality? I'm going to show an example of laser marking on a flat surface. Laser marking software, such as WaveRunner, allow construction of job files containing any combination of text, images, or other objects, and we'll come back to that a bit later. So a scan head with an F-theta lens, shown here, is great for flat objects and fields up to maybe six inches square. But I mentioned some applications like solar panels, which can be considerably larger. A three-axis scan head consists of a two-axis head in the standard XY configuration, coupled with a motorized optical focus instead of an F-theta lens. Similar to the two-axis heads, these heads will produce a beam focused to between 2 and 200 microns at the work surface, depending on the working distance, optical configuration, and wavelength. Again, you'll see many of the same types of capabilities. However, these units provide additional flexibility not found in the two axis designs. In addition, these heads are capable of working at very large field sizes, up to a meter square or more. Giving these units the capability to address things like an entire solar panel in a single pass without needing external motion tables or having to stitch the fields of multiple smaller heads together. Let's show a bit more detail about how these work. In this case, we now have a post-objective scanning configuration where the moving mirrors are placed after the objective lens. In this view, the beam enters from the right side, passes through the expander lenses, then through an objective lens. At this point, the beam is converging. It passes across the scan mirrors and is brought to focus on the work surface. The bowl shape in blue is the natural focus of the beam. If the expander lens stays in one spot, of course, as is the case with the F-theta lens, it would be much more useful to have the system remain focused on a flat field. 
by dynamically changing the position of the expander lens. We can do just that. An upstream controller calculates the amount of correction needed at any given XY location and adjusts the Z focus axis accordingly. Let's take a look at one method for building a Z focuser. Shown here is an example of a traditional rotary to linear translator for Z axis focus. This technology is still a workhorse product for the larger XG series three axis products. Advantages of the XG include larger field of view and user adjustment of the spot size and working distance ratios. It allows flexibility to change between a small number of favorite setups or more nuanced development and refining of a laser process. The XG can be used for vol volumetric processing, but is limited in speed due to the large moving mass of the lens assembly. For more demanding applications, we developed the Blink High Speed Translator. The Blink is a patented voice coil design and is highly optimized for maximum torque and extremely low moving mass. It is capable of very high accelerations up to 50 G. The construction is as a coaxial through beam design, which saves space and it supports a one and a half inch diameter lens with an incredible 13 millimeters of travel. It's operated by a standard Galvo amplifier and an excellent choice for fast linear movement of a small optic. Let's show the high speed focuser in action. Here we'll show three clips. First showing full stroke again at one hertz, second showing full stroke at 22 hertz, just under the threshold of continuity for human vision, and third, a 100 hertz motion at about one millimeter stroke. By comparison, the heavier linear translator would take about 30 watts to operate full stroke at only 16 hertz. The Blink voice coil can do 22 hertz, almost 50% faster, at less than 12 watts, which is less than half the power. In all ways, a more compact and efficient solution. When coupled, into a three axis scan head, it allows volumetric processing at much higher throughput. We'll show that in action in a moment. First, a very quick introduction to laser marking software. These types of marking software allow users to create objects natively in the GUI, as well as import 2D graphics from a number of sources and file types full control of the marking speeds, laser power, hatching, and numerous other parameters are available to refine a laser process exactly to a customer's liking. 3D objects can be imported and sliced for additive manufacturing or used to define the surface of non-flat items in the case of contour marking, as we will show in this example. This is an example of the DCB320-Y1 marking on a curved surface, utilizing the dynamic capability of the Z focus axis to keep the spot in focus on the work surface. A 3D model is imported and used to define the surface in the marking software so that it can compute the coordinated XYZ motion with the laser. For scale, this steel cover has a diameter of about 1.25 inches. In this example, the marking speed is relatively low and the laser power high to create a mark with very high contrast. In the video, we now see an example of some of the different types of marks that are possible. The top left in blue shows basic shapes, lines, circles, and squares. To the right, we see an imported image that will be marked as grayscale intensity on the workpiece. Below those, we see a variety of objects that can be dynamically updated, such as time and date, 
barcodes, 2D matrix codes, and serial numbers. These can be auto-incremented or driven from customer software or external factory automation controllers, such as PLCs. Allowing highly automated laser processing with the laser system providing a flexible, soft tooling capability that can be easily reconfigured as needs change. Thank you for joining me. If anyone has any questions, I will be available for a few minutes to answer them.